Welcome back to another edition of... where we bring you only the finest vintage test equipment of days gone by. Check it out. This is a Sanwa. Very, very old Sanwa. Sanwa P3. Classic. A big retro tech thank you and shout out to Barry. Out in Nanaimo, BC. Beautiful in Nanaimo. Thanks so much, Barry, for sending the P3 in for this vintage look. Look at that gorgeous analog display dating back to 1958. That is whew, some almost, oh wow, 70 plus years ago. So <laughs> this has been around for a long time, but still, still that needle performs as good as it did back in the day. This one also has a separate logo on the top, R Mac and Company Limited. This was manufactured in Japan. This is a classic vintage. Here's those original Sanwa test leads. Look at that. Wow, they're ancient. They're a little bit brittle, but nonetheless, uh, they're still workable. Pointy as ever, and look at that. That's the end that goes into the analog meter, and it's still really pointy, but uh, Wow. Okay, gonna test a 9-volt battery and just see how accurate it is after all these years for DC volts. Now, pay attention to the DC volt scale. Should end up around here. Fingers crossed. And look at that. Oh yes. Coming in a little low. Under nine volts, about 8.8 .8 volts, according to this meter. I uh, did test at nine volts with my Sanwa meter, uh, digital multimeter. So it's coming in just a, a little bit low. I reached out to my good friends over at Sanwa Japan and they were able to give me a couple of interesting tidbits. One of them is that the glass they used in this meter and the windows is as thin as two millimeter. And the glass receptacles are attached to the panels as reinforcement with, his, with adhesive. Um, that prevents discoloration over time. And it means basically that this meter will stand the test of time. Something else I wasn't expecting. When I first saw the meter, I thought, oh, it's Bakelite, it's Bakelite. It's not Bakelite. No, it's not Bakelite, it's not plastic. It's actually made of iron. Yes, according to Sanwa, cases made of iron material that has been s squeezed together. This creates a shielding effect, a Faraday cage. It makes it less susceptible to external magnetic fields. Isn't that cool? So this isn't Bakelite, it's not plastic. It's actually iron. Oh, it's actually iron. And just in case you're wondering what it looks like on the inside, well, there you go. Look at that. All precision resistors over here. And that saucer tin can there, that's the cover for the coil housing. And there you go, closer look at that. Wow. You know, the coil is basically suspended in a magnetic field and when current passes through the coil, uh, it generates a force. And that force is what moves the coil and the needle on an axis. Um, you know, there is a lot of very precision-like detail uh, in analog meters, I mean, they can be very sensitive, like 50 microamps or less for full scale deflection uh, of the needle. So uh, I guess basically remember the driving force of any analog meter is the current that passes through it. If you look close, if, I don't know how close I can get in there, but uh, yeah, lots and lots of serious precision going on. Besides the coil itself, we have the counterbalance we have a cylinder support we have a lower control spring which you you can't see um there's a lot going on in that little space the fact that such a precision movement too actually couldn't create uh, problems i mean you know believe it or not uh one of the biggest problems uh is foreign matter magnetic particles for instance can 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 stop or impede the movement of the coil uh, in that magnetic field so wow 
If you look closely, you can see a little bit of damage to where the 1.5 uh, battery cells would be housed. Uh, yeah, it looks like the tips here have broken off as well as the uh, the wire connectors as well. But uh, anyway, it's, it's, it is repairable, um, but it's only if you want to measure resistance. Uh, you can still do voltage without those battery cells. And uh, uh, you know what? I think it still looks good. Take a close look, you can actually see that iron that's just been squeezed together, fused together to create this old fashioned Faraday cage. Something else that's really cool as well. Look, I'll just flip it up a bit and look at that. Number 81427. So it was categorized, did have a serial number. They wrote it right on the meter. <laughs> Meter itself had limited functionality. Of course, here we have our resistance. It only went from one mega ohm to 10 kilo ohm. For DC amps, up to 250 milliamps. And from voltage, hey, up to 1000 volts DC. Also up to 1000 volts AC. But yeah, that was about it. That was about it. Of course, we have the ohms adjust over here. Compared to a modern day Sanwa, Yes, not near the number of features, but whoa, I still love the look of these old sand ones. Even look at the logo. It's so retro. It's really amazing if you look at the detail on the analog display itself. I mean, the scales, wow, almost 70 years later and they are still crisp as ever. So simple to read. And I'm telling you, very easy on the eye. Now you don't have that uh, mirror, that parallax mirror on this meter. I came after rather, but uh, you know what? Still excellent, excellent detail. Japanese quality shines through. Gorgeous. Boy, this was a lot of fun. This old Sanwa was a real treat. I love these old analog meters. Hey, thanks for taking this trip down vintage memory lane. You and me and the Sanwa P3.